Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today it is finally here, my series on retouching skin. Now, this is something that's been asked for ever since I started the channel, and I kept telling people, no, I want to wait till I get a bigger audience so more people can see it, and I finally reached 2,500 subscribers, which was the number I had been telling people I wanted to get to, and where I wanted to be before I started this, so today we're starting off with the basics of skin retouching. Now, what I usually do is I like to create a new layer, and the reason I like to create a new layer is that way if we have any mistakes, we can go ahead and erase them. And the reason why this is important is if you retouch on a background layer, you can't actually undo uh, or erase without having to undo anything else you do after. So if you decide after you've already worked on your image for say 20, 30 minutes, that you have a mistake that you need to fix, but that mistake happened, I'd say at the very beginning, you'd have to undo all your progress to the very beginning of when you start working on your image, or you'd have to just start over. With it having a separate layer, all you have to do is just hit E for the eraser tool and you can just get rid of it and work on it again. It's much better that way. And that way nothing you're doing is destructive to the image. And any professional retouchers will do this. They work on layers so that way the client can have a say over what they want to keep or what they don't. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit J to bring up the spot healing brush tool. And I wanted to start with the spot healing brush tool because this is the most basic uh, tool you can use for retouching. And I don't want to get too complicated because I learned with the basics as well. I probably retouched with just the spot healing tool for about two or three months, and that's all I used. And it actually does a really good job with it. It's just, it's not as uh, selective or controllable as the other tools. But we'll get into those lessons later. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the face here, and we'll see the subject has pretty good skin, but there are a few flaws and blemishes that we can remove and it's not gonna to be too hard to do that. So let's go ahead and make sure our type is set to content aware, the blend mode is set to normal, and not create texture or proximity match. We wanna sample all layers, and that's not really applicable here because we are starting on a blank layer. If we were to have a lot of layers open already and we've done a bunch of work and it wasn't set to sample all layers, it would only sample from the layer that we have here. And because this is a blank layer and not a copy of anything, what's gonna happen is if we try to heal anything, nothing's going to happen. And that's because it's only sampling from the layer that we're on. So in order to actually do any kind of work, what we need to do is check sample all layers. And the other benefit to it is it will take into account not just your background layer, but every layer that's currently up. So let's go ahead and resize our brush and zoom in some more. And let's start working on a little bit of this skin texture. And you'll see we just paint over it and it automatically kind of decides where it will sample from. And that's the beauty of the spot healing brush tool is that it will automatically kind of decide where it wants to sample from and it will pick usually the closest match and the best match and that's why we have content aware on. So it's really easy to actually use this tool and there's not much to it. What I'm doing is I'm just looking for any uh, blemishes and then patches of uneven skin, like areas that just don't seem to be the right color or they're slightly more saturated than others, I want to go ahead and go over those and try to get a better blend for the area around it. Now, see here, this got a little too blurry with the selection that it chose. So instead of just undoing it, I'm gonna quick demonstrate what I was talking about before. All this patching that we've done so far is on this separate layer. So if we just go ahead and hold down Alt and click, we can actually see where we've worked. So if we undo that, and we decide we want to get rid of this, instead of doing Control alt z to remove the patches as we made them, what we can actually do is just hit E for the erasing tool and then just draw over it. And uh, let me go ahead and actually undo that erasing and take a look at this from afar. There's a plane going overhead. Every now and then you'll hear that in the background of my videos because we have a crazy amount of air traffic where I live. I, I love my house, but it's uh, kind of noisy at times. So we're just going to continue going over these blemishes and little areas. Got some dry skin on the nose here. Nothing too bad, though. And like I said, I'm just trying to target any area that I see that has like too rough of a texture or has a color difference or it's just more saturated or anything like that. And I don't really like the way that one looks. Oh, that was actually looking okay. It's just that's part of the skin I didn't realize. And sometimes you'll get a bad heel or it uh, doesn't look good. And instead of erasing it, you can actually just run your brush over it one more time. And that will actually further uh, go over it. It'll just 
try to reanalyze the image, it'll actually fill it in with something new instead of adding more problems to the area. It'll try to fix whatever the previous problem was. Uh, a lot of times what will happen is if you get an area like this where it's high contrast and you draw a large amount, it'll look very strange. Like, see, that doesn't look exactly natural. But if you run your healing brush over it some more, it'll fill it in a little bit better than it was originally. So if we kind of just step back here, you'll see that that was our first heal. And then by running it over it a few times, we were able to like kind of patch it up a bit more. Okay, so we're just going to continue on with this, and it's a very slow process, but like I said, the attention to detail part of it is what is the uh, most important thing to my images, because I always get like uh, questions on how I manage to get the skin so clean, and it's because I spend a long time on this, and I look for every little uh, blemish or possible uh, skin flaw, and I make sure to take care of it. Uh, it does take a lot of time, uh, but I, in the end, I feel that it makes the images worth it, and makes mine stand out from the crowd. Uh, so we're just going to continue going through this, healing these little areas. And this is, like I said, it's it's super easy. We just kind of like draw over it and it instantly takes care of things. And it does a really, really good job at it. Um, there was a time where this tool was not this accurate before like content aware when it just created texture, it looked terrible. So let me just show you what create texture used to do. You draw on it and then it would just like fill in with this random like blank texture that it thought like kind of mimicked skin, but really it just, it made it look super blurry and uh, not lifelike at all. So this tool used to be like not used very often. It was uh, kind of a last resort if you couldn't fix it with the other tools, but nowadays it's actually really quite good. Here's going to be a little tricky area because the transition from light to shadow is uh, sort of abrupt and it the, that's one thing that kind of tricks up this uh, tool. Uh, that doesn't look so bad if I toggle. Yeah, that actually did a pretty decent job. Uh, but the, be aware of uh, getting too close to edges or uh, sharp transitions in color from like the uh, base skin tone to the lips or other areas like that because it will usually have a kind of hard time with it so you have to really be a little more patient with it but that is the one drawback of this what you could do is use some of the other tools in conjunction with this and that would actually help uh, a lot but for now we're just going to go ahead and keep working with this see I'm getting a bad heal here so I'm just going to hit E erase that out Zoom in a bit more. Go ahead and heal some more here. Hopefully it's not picking up that pink lip color anymore. See, and sometimes you just want to undo or run over it again until you get it starting to look right. Uh, you don't really notice it so much from afar, but it is a little bit discolored. Um, Let me zoom in a bit more. I'm gonna try really carefully to just go over that little speck there. Eh, I still don't like the way that looks, so I'm just gonna hit E, erase it again. J to bring my healing brush back up. Try a larger area, maybe? No. Okay, so see, this is the area, this is the time where I would probably switch to another tool, but I don't want to get into covering that yet, so I'm just gonna, okay, that one right there, that did it pretty good. Uh, but I'm just gonna kind of move on here. Uh, looks like I undid it a little too far. See, that's why I like to use the erasing tool typically over undo is I, uh, can, you can sometimes go and screw something up that you worked on if you aren't paying close attention, so. Just continuing on through here. If we go ahead and toggle, we can see where we started to where we are now. 
Uh, we've cleaned up quite a lot already. So let's go ahead and zoom in some more. Let's get rid of that little fleck of makeup. Now, the other thing is you have to decipher what is a blemish and what is a feature of someone's skin. Because if you are just healing everything possible, I'd be removing all these freckles, but I don't really want to do that. I want to leave the freckles because that's part of the character of this model and I want that to stay. So sometimes there are retouchers that will remove uh, freckles, but I typically don't like to do that. Uh, because you, I, I'm a firm believer in if it's a feature someone has all the time, if it's something that's just part of them, you don't want to retouch it because that can be offensive. So that goes for freckles and moles and uh, any kind of uh, skin discoloration that's natural and not just like a little blemish that's starting or happening or anything like that. And you don't want to upset or offend anyone when you're retouching. You just want to make people look their best. Uh, so try to keep that in mind, but it's honestly up to you what you consider to be a person's uh, blemishes or flaws and stuff like that and how much you want to retouch for yourself. Uh, I know in beauty campaigns, they tend to overly retouch and get rid of every kind of uh, freckle and stuff like that. So um, just keep that in mind, though. That is something that I firmly believe in, but I know uh, other photographers who they'll just get rid of everything. They don't care. So we're just going to continue on moving around through the image and checking for any kind of discoloration we want to remove or any blemish and running over it with this spot healing tool. And it also works really well for some stray hairs like here we have this and just kind of quick run over these areas and remove those stray hairs. And it does a really good job. I'm really impressed with the latest versions of the content aware or spot healing tool. Uh, I think it's it's a really great start for retouching. If you don't know all the other tools or if you don't want to take the time to learn them, this is actually like I'd say 90% as good. And I always try to resize my brush to be roughly the size of the uh, blemish or area I want to work on just because I find it, it helps to have it smaller. So uh, the algorithm that they use to decide where the content aware patch should come from is roughly the same size as what you're working on because you don't want it to be too large because otherwise it can make the entire area look weird. So try to keep it small and keep it about the size of what you're working on. And I'm just being quiet because I've kind of ran over all the uh, principles that I like to go by and things I like to look for during retouching. And uh, I'm just trying to focus a little bit and make this go a little faster because when I talk, it's kind of hard to keep up because not only do I not script these videos out and just record, I also just kind of come up with observations. So I might come back to something, but uh, it's, it's sometimes easier to focus on what I'm actually doing if I stop the talking. See, I didn't like the way that heel looked. Uh, I undid with Control alt z But like I said, it's, it's also really handy. If you don't notice immediately that you don't like it, you can come back to it with the erasing tool and just erase it. So keep that in mind. Can 
can also clean up a little around the eyebrows. Just get those stray hairs. Really simple stuff. It does a surprisingly good job. It, it you can you can barely tell that you were using this or that anything was even edited really when you look at the image where some of the other tools it's really easy to botch it and have it look really bad if you don't do it successfully and that's why I wanted to start with this because it is the easiest and the most simple way to start retouching skin and to not actually uh, overdo it because especially when you get into things like frequency separation it's so easy to overdo and there's so many different techniques and certain times that, I mean, you do want an overdone look. Certain times you want the person to look completely flawless. And you want those skin transitions and color and texture to be as smooth as possible. Uh, I'm not really liking the way this is looking now that I'm undoing that. So I think I'm just going to leave that hair just because it's too hard and difficult. But yeah, it, it's really easy to overdo other types of skin retouching. So I wanted to start with the basics. And sometimes it's helpful to back out and then look at the image as a whole because you can actually see what might be perceived as a blemish from afar more than what you were seeing up close because certain areas you don't actually see up close while you're uh, in there and you won't actually realize like, oh, hey, from afar that looks a little too red or it looks patchy or whatever. And that's uh, an important step as well as to kind of back up and see what the image looks like from afar and, and as a whole instead of just uh, zoomed in. Well, being zoomed in helps you get a very clean uh, skin retouch. It doesn't help everything because there is larger, more global issues and areas that need to be uh, fixed. And I'm just trying to patch up. All right, guys, so some bad news. While saving out the video, the program that I used to record actually crashed. It didn't finish what it was doing. So there's a little bit at the end missing, but I was mostly done. So hopefully it's not missing anything too important. If you have any questions or anything is missing or you feel like you didn't learn something that you wish you would have or something like that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll answer as quickly as I can. Uh, hopefully it's not too much because I'm pretty sure I just balanced out some uh, uneven areas from afar, which hopefully you got the gist of. So let's go ahead and actually zoom in real fast and take a look at the work we actually did. Let's go ahead and toggle the layer off and on. And you can see we changed quite a lot. Let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see some more of these details. And you'll see we just did a really nice job cleaning everything up, certain little areas. Um, actually, through toggling, I see a little area I'd like to grab right here. And sometimes that's important when toggling. You want to actually keep an eye out for any areas that you might have missed that you want to get. There's another one right there. Actually, let me resize just a little bit more. That looks good. And we're just toggling on and off, and we'll see what a huge difference just a simple tool of the spot healing tool can actually do. So let's go ahead and zoom out from afar, toggle on and off, and what you'll notice is it doesn't make too much of a difference from afar, and that's actually a good thing because a good retouching will look like you didn't retouch it at all, and that's really important because you want it to look like the subject's just a natural beauty, and you did a great job photographing them. It's not really that they needed to be retouched or anything like that. So hopefully this was able to help you guys today. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.